People are no longer looking for mass-produced goods. Everyone wants to be an individual and everybody's looking for individuality. The story of the Loving Chair Company starts with my daughter coming back from uni wanting to do textile design and us brainstorming around the kitchen table how we were going to display her designs and I've always been very passionate about chairs so we decided we were going to set up a company making chairs in her fabrics. I called mum who at the time was living in Lisbon and said we needed her help. She was very excited about working with her daughter and granddaughter. Five years on and we have expanded. Our product was very well received in the Jersey market and gave us the confidence really to grow the business. Going back to my heritage, I decided to look at opportunities in Portugal. So my mum's a perfectionist. I want things done yesterday. And Bronte obsesses about detail. So the process starts with drawing. Um, I usually work in a sketchbook, I use Posca pens. I then translate that into the computer, where then it really allows me to work with that design. And it is daring, but it's just, that's what we want to do. We want to stand out with it. Sometimes it's not always about somebody liking the fabric. It's about the impression. We'd rather somebody not like it, but it have made a lasting impression than to walk away and have felt nothing. It's uh, very loud in our workshop because we're all very opinionated and we've got different ideas. As a team, we've got over 500 years of experience making chairs. We all get very excited about working together on new projects because every product that we create is bespoke and our one-offs. Just as we all like to choose our own accessories, why can't we do that with furniture? Why not be able to choose what studs, what piping, what finish on the legs, you know, tie it into your room, make it your personality. And then we've got Hugo and Zer who've been working together since they were 16. Hugo is the peacemaker and a bit of a joker. Zer is the organizer, so he schedules all the work. And then we've got the lovely seamstresses, Maria, Manuela, Nanda and Rosa who's the real boss of the whole workshop. Nothing gets past her. And then the upholsterers, Thelmo and Lino. Thelmo started off stuffing cushions. He's the youngest of the team as our trainee upholsterer. And now he's gonna take over our product photography. And then there's there with his swagger and his odd cigarette break from time to time. Oh, he's quit now. But I think Lino still smokes. Our third Zer is our carpenter, makes all our frames to spec. Paolo, who is in charge of all the upholsterers, he's always got a smile on his face and nothing is too much bother for him. Each individual is a craftsperson in their own right, but as a team, they create something really special. They're not just making furniture, they're creating art pieces. If somebody had told me when I was a stroppy teenager that actually, oh yeah, you'll be working with mum and you'll have Graham by your side, I would have said absolutely not. Yeah, we have our arguments on time to time, but we're a strong family unit and actually we work amazingly together. We've got the same characteristics and we like the same thing. We've got the same style. It's often when we're in the workshop and mum will say, oh, I really like this, or shall we try this idea? And I'm like, oh yeah, let's do that, because we've just bounced off each other. And actually finding somebody else in life to do that with doesn't necessarily come round all the time. And as much as I don't like to admit it, mum is my best friend in it. Oh God, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> <laughs> she does love me. <laughs> Thank you.
it's a privilege to see the reaction that our customers have when they first open those sample books and feel the fabrics and see the colours. To have something that you look at that makes you happy and makes you smile is just amazing.